everyone. This video is building on the last video. Um, we're looking at comparing two samples com or comparing two parameters, but in this video we're going to be using confidence intervals instead of doing hypothesis tests. So similar idea but different, um, different thing that we're computing. Uh, if you haven't already watched the hypothesis test video, you should look at that one first. So this example is a continuation from the last video where we're looking at infants with bed nets and without bed nets and how many of them got malaria. So we did a hypothesis test for this in the first video to look at, um, you know, is, is the proportion with bed nets lower than the proportion without bed nets? And we did conclude that it was. Another way we can think about this is with a confidence interval. So we're looking at the difference between these two proportions. And remember the sample proportions we computed, um, 15 out of 352, this was 0 0.043 about, and the 26 out of 287, this was 0 0.091 about. So when we do a confidence interval, with two samples, we're essentially looking at the difference between the two uh, proportions. Now we could take the difference between uh, the two sample proportions right now. Now if we did p hat 1 minus p hat 2, we would end up with a negative number because p2 is bigger. So we would expect that uh, the difference between our population proportions would be similar, but our confidence interval will give us an estimate on what this difference would be. So again, we're just going to do this on the calculator. Um, in this case, this is in our test menu again, and we're doing a two proportion Z interval instead of Z test. So I think that's a little further down here. So two proportion Z interval. So we're entering this information. For our first sample, we have 15 out of 352 and 26 out of 287. The confidence level, I didn't specify in this problem here. Let's go ahead and do um, a confidence level to match our previous example. We'll do a confidence level of 99%. Uh, and this would be something specified in the problem. Okay, so we calculate and we get this uh, interval that says that the difference between P1 and P2 is between negative 0 0.0997 and 0 0.00373. Now you'll notice that this confidence interval contains zero since one side is negative and one side is positive. What's that t what that's telling us is that at the 99% confidence level, um, there is a possibility that P1 minus P2 could be zero, or in other words, it's possible that these two proportions are the same. Now this is actually a different conclusion than what we saw with the hypothesis test. Um, and if we changed our confidence level, this would like we would change. So if we went in and did the same thing, and did a 95% confidence level. In this case, zero is actually not contained. So this interval here at the 95% confidence level would say that um, even though this difference could range between different values, uh, all the time the P2 value is larger than the P1 value, that the difference comes out negative. So that's the information that a confidence interval can give us. And confidence intervals are really less reliable than the hypothesis tests in terms of um, concluding which one of these two is bigger, but it can tell us some information about what the difference is. We can do the same thing with means. We would be looking at what is the difference between two population means. Um, on the calculator, this is a two sample T interval. So if you go in here, just like with uh, our hypothesis test version, there's an option to put in data or an option to put in statistics instead. And we can enter same type of information here and figure out what our interval would look like. So that's actually it for this topic. Um, just a brief little uh, introduction here. Um, here's a problem for you to try looking at men and women and how many words they speak in a single day.
So that's it for this video. See you next time.